Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, if you could take up your seats, uh, we're going to have quite an exciting discussion here on a very exciting event that has taken place here uh, during the last day in the UAE. And uh, to give you some background, I would just first like to introduce uh, the colleagues on the stage. Uh, my name is Dionte Blanche. Uh, I'm a director of Atmospheric Research and Environment at the World Meteorological Organization in Geneva. And uh, to my left here is uh, uh, Umar uh, uh, Al Azizi, he's the Director of Research, Development and the Training Department at the National Center of Meteorology and Seismology here in the UAE. Then we have Professor Masataka Murakami from the Meteorological Research Institute in Japan. Professor Linda Zhou, uh, Desalination and Water Purification Department of Chemical and Environmental Engineering Institute. Center for Water and Environment at the Master Institute in the UAE. That's quite a title. Dr. Wolfmeier, Volker Wolfmeier, uh, Inst Institute of Physics and Meteorology in Germany. And uh, Sufyan Farah, a meteorologist and cloud seeding expert, uh, also involved uh, at the National Center for Meteorology and Seismology here in the UAE. So what uh, this discussion this afternoon will be about is it will provide you some insights into the UAE research program for rain enhancement science and also the awardees and their innovative proposals which has been awarded in the past day for research grants uh, to take us forward in this exciting field. We are discussing water as the most critical, critical substance for human and uh, environmental survival in this century that we live in and the UAE is actually taking the lead in providing innovative research in uh, developing new techniques re regarding rainfall enhancement. So this panel will provide a platform for spirited discussions on the topics of interest to uh, the rainfall enhancement community. Uh, it's taking place right after the announcement of the three awardees of the UAE research program for rain enhancement science inaugural year. It will be a highlight of the program outcome and achievements. It will explore each winning proposal, the key findings, the objectives, milestones, and the expected results of the research in different parts of the world. The panelists will discuss the future of rainfall enhancement science and technology, uh, and I will ask them a few questions to get them going on this, and the prospects of enhanced and deepened international cooperation in this field. Eventually, the discussions will also cover concrete cases of research, specific applications of the winning proposals and their contribution to the global e efforts in reviving rainfall enhancement science. To just give you a little bit of background, uh, humankind has always had a desire to influence the weather because we are often uh, victims of weather events and especially droughts and floods. So from the most, most early times there was a desire also to modify weather and especially to enhance rainfall in arid and semi-arid regions. But it was only during the Second World War, shortly afterwards in the USA, where it was discovered that certain substances can actually change the microphysical processes in clouds. In other words, the microscopical processes that lead to droplet formation and ice crystal formation in clouds. And since the 1946 era, there has been many programs around the world reaching a highlight in the 60s and 70s. Uh, and then in tapering off in recent years. But with the ongoing uh, demands for water and water security, uh, this is again being seen as a very viable technique that if we could uh, uh, enhance the reliability of the techniques developed, it could really make a significant change in providing water security in the world as part of an integrated component in water management uh, techniques. So uh, I have a few questions that I would like to ask the panelists and uh, my colleagues Umar and Sufyan are also welcome to probe the uh, three panelists for more information. But let's kick off and I would like them in the order of the way they sit, uh, starting with Professor Masataka to answer these uh, questions. So the first one would be, how would each of your research projects contribute 
to rain enhancement in general and to the UAE in specific. So if you could, it's two questions. In general and specific to the UAE, your specific award-winning proposal. We are going to uh, uh, make a uh, rain enhancement research uh, using a combination of uh, laboratory experiment and the numerical simulation and uh, in situ and remote sensing observation. For example, uh, the a technique to uh, evaluate or identify the uh, seedable cloud and the uh, uh, maybe the uh, very uh, sophisticated uh, seeding scheme for numerical model, which is uh, based on a, a very much intensive uh, laboratory experiment. Even the, they say, the characterization of uh, seeding material, uh, those things are uh, very, uh, what shall I say, the, uh, those things uh, contribute to not only the a rain enhancement uh, project uh, in, in the UAE, but also the, all, all the uh, rain enhancement uh, projects uh, all over the world. So, but the, uh, on the other hand, uh, uh, our result, uh, which is uh, expected to contribute uh, really uh, UAE research, uh, UAE rain enhancement uh, project is, for example, or the uh, occurrence frequency of seedable cloud over the UAE, uh, which is uh, derived uh, from the uh, operational, operationally available satellite data or uh, operational uh, radar data, you know. Or the, uh, the very specific uh, special technique to evaluate the degree of seedability. Uh, this is also uh, very much a uh, contribute uh, contribute the UAE uh, enhancement project. And also we are uh, using numerical model to evaluate the seasonal or annual uh, rainfall or increase by cloud seeding. So uh, this uh, expected uh, additional uh, rainfall due to the cloud seeding is uh, very much, I, I hope, uh, helpful to the UAE enhancement activity okay okay thank you professor Linda could you uh, tell us uh, how do you see uh, your research project contributing to the uh, rain enhancement uh, science in general and also specific to the UAE you are based in the UAE so it should be quite easy for you okay thank you chairman yes uh, our project uh, maybe benefits the rain enhancement science in general ways uh, for example we probably will um, have the potential to prepare and develop a more efficient cloud seeding materials, which uh, end up more easy to form the raindrops and uh, result in more rainfall. A second element is um, we will develop methods to be able to observe the water condensation on the surface of the cloud seeding materials by electron microscope. So this type of observation provides a very useful, powerful tool to evaluate how effective the water condensation and the re result of the rain enhancement. The third element will be develop a model, which this numerical model will be used to input the cloud information and the cloud and the seeding materials parameters to be able to compare with and without the seeding materials, uh, what results of re enhancement is. And the uh, second part of the question is to how re specific related to the UAE uh, environment. Um, I'm just aware there are ongoing cloud seeding operations, which is definitely provide a very relevant platform for this uh, nanotechnology based um, re enhancement project because we can discuss with the current practice and also start from there, aims to improve if possible. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Volker? Yeah. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, I would like to give you a short overview um, 
of the objectives of our projects. We have two major objectives. First of all, we would like to provide the UAE with advanced forecasting capabilities with respect to the simulation uh, of clouds and precipitation. And the second objective is to study uh, whether land cover modifications in the UAE and terrain modifications can be used to translocate and amplify precipitation. Coming to the first objective, we are uh, using three tools. First of all, we would like to study the conditions which are leading to the development of clouds. Currently, this is a big uh, gap in scientific understanding. What are the processes leading to the evolution of clouds at a certain time and location? For this purpose, we will bring new instrumentation to the UAE, which are able to uh, measure the clear air environment of clouds, the airflow and the um, to, um, environment before the clouds develop. So the, basically the wind fields. And the second tool is a new forecast model, which has a resolution down to 100 meters, which has the capability to resolve much better the flow structures over the complex mountain ranges, for instance, and over the desert um, to study much better what is leading to the evolution of clouds. And the third one is that we're merging these kind of observations and the model forecast which is called data assimilation to improve the forecast um, capability. And then we will study with, in connection with the second objective um, whether land cover modifications like plantations or so can be used to amplify uh, precipitation. So that's um, the general overview of our <coughs> project. Coming to your general question, we think that uh, better forecast capabilities alone can be very helpful for the people and for the environment because this will lead also to a better prediction of extreme events. And we are very confident that we will be able to improve the lead time and the performance of the model uh, with respect to the simulation of flat flash floods, which can also be very important in this region and this is very helpful you know, for the protection of the people and the environment. So that I think there's a general aspect you know, also coming out of this project. But generally, um, we would like to get a better scientific insight you know, in the whole process chain leading to the evolution of clouds and uh, precipitation. Thank you very much. Uh, of course, in the audience, you are welcome to send me some questions that you might have for the uh, awardees, and then we can get into them afterwards if we have some time. For those that, of you that are not that familiar with this field of study, it's uh, quite interesting that every cloud drop that you find in the atmosphere and every ice crystal that you find in the atmosphere develops on particles, on dust particles called aerosols, very specific aerosols in the atmosphere. The, the condensation ones are called cloud condensation nuclei. So if you modify these particles in the atmosphere, in theory, you can modify the droplet size distribution in clouds. And the same applies to ice crystals uh, in the atmosphere. Each one of them develop on an ice nuclei, which is a very specific uh, particle in the atmosphere, many times origin for, from desert areas. And these uh, particles, if you modify them or change the quantity in the atmosphere, you can change the properties of clouds. But in this field, everything comes together because, as you heard, we've got very diverse uh, proposals that uh, got these awards from nanotechnology, which is completely a new approach uh, to the field of cloud seeding, to uh, a more rigorous use of existing methods, uh, as well as uh, new ideas of how to, to work with surface convergence and very high-resolution modeling to understand the natural processes. So the field of rainfall enhancement really brings together all the scientific knowledge that you, we have in the field of atmospheric science to try and understand and eventually to modify conditions in such a way that it's beneficial for humankind. But let's get into the second question. I would like to ask the panelists now, what plans do you have to ensure knowledge transfer between your teams and the National Center for Meteorology and Seismology team here in the UAE? who you will be working closely with during the next uh, coming four, three years. These awards are for research over the next three years. So we can start again in the same order. Okay. 
we are planning to have a, a year-round uh, ground-based uh, observation here in the UAE. And also, uh, we are planning to have uh, intensive aircraft measurement uh, in 2017 uh, for about one month. At the time, uh, we will uh, collaborate with the uh, National Center uh, for uh, Meteorology and Seismology uh, people very uh, closely, tightly. So uh, I think uh, that is uh, a kind of opportunity to uh, do a, a, a knowledge transfer regarding the how to measure the aerosol cloud and precipitation. Uh, and how to uh, how to relate or how to uh, understand the uh, effect of the aerosol on the uh, cloud and the precipitation formation. Also, the artificial aerosol, I mean the seeding material, how uh, impact on the uh, evolution of uh, uh, cloud microphysics and uh, finally the precipitation phenomena. And also uh, how to analyze the uh, aircraft data and the, uh, during the uh, IOP, maybe a more or longer, uh, probably one year, we run uh, our uh, numerical model, uh, uh, operation, uh, what shall I say, the oper almost operational, not operational, but uh, almost operational. Especially during the IOP, we run the, our model to predict the uh, seedable cloud, you know, uh, or uh, even the air. Uh, uh, how much uh, additional uh, rainfall uh, we can get uh, from the uh, cloud seeding, uh, glaciogenic or hygroscopic seeding. So I think uh, this uh, information is very much uh, helpful uh, also uh, for the uh, UAE people, uh, I hope. Okay, thank you. Linda, could you uh, get into this? Of, of course, all three of the awardees <laughs> are from university, so... Uh, they are very good at capacity building and training, and so uh, this is something that comes natural to them. Linda. Yes. This nanotechnology project will not be run uh, by isolation, in isolation. Instead, we will closely um, in contact with the National Center of Meteorology and uh, Seismology. And uh, my geographic location here in Abu Dhabi make it quite uh, easy to achieve. So I uh, may start with the first step is to understand the current used uh, ground seeding, uh, cloud seeding materials. And then we were using an approach of backwards forwards in contact and report and discussion. Most of this nanotechnology approach will be based in laboratory. I'm not aiming immediately scaling up, but the feedback will be really critical from the NC uh, National Center to to provide me with information such as the feasibility, cost, and uh, other restricting information. So they are very important. So at the end of the, each year, we will have a more knowledge transfer workshops, and it will provide a platform for more thorough exchange of information. Thank you. Thank you, Volker. Uh, capacity building and knowledge transfer covers a significant part of our project. Um, we consider this essential. Yeah, I'm a professor you know, at the University of Hohenheim in Germany, and um, it's of course my task you know, that 50% of my time is covered by education and 50% and averaged by research. So I would like to give you some examples of uh, what we would like to do. First of all, we uh, are establishing a strong collaboration with the Master Institute with respect to the education of students. So we are looking forward to exchange students and to work together uh, to coordinate our master classes. We have a master class on Earth System Science in, at the University of Hohenheim, which is also open for students uh, coming from the UAE, actually. And we can also bring our students you know, for workshops here to the UAE, which I think will be a very exciting environment for them. And um, the um, coverage of the educational activities includes uh, knowledge on remote sensing systems. So I can really tell you that if the students are playing with these instruments, it's usually really fun no? to see what's coming out when they do the measurements. Um, they 
learn how to handle the instruments and uh, look at the data. So that's uh, with respect to remote sensing instruments. And on the other hand, we have also our high resolution models, which can be actually run also by the students. It's not only anymore nowadays a miracle to operate a forecast model. You, know, you, can, you can set it up on your laptop and do a forecast and analyze the, the forecast. So I think it's a really nice educational tool. So these are uh, examples on the educational part. And with respect to knowledge transfer, we are planning to organize two summer schools um, which, um, and international workshops, which are, again, dealing with these two aspects. Yeah. The operation of uh, new remote sensing systems in desert regions. And the other one is the operation of new high resolution models in desert regions to understand better the cloud evolution. Thank you, that is quite exciting. You want to yeah, add something? I, sorry, I forgot to mention, but uh, I'm also planning to have a, a, a kind of seminar uh, in the third year uh, on the topics of general weather modification issue, uh, including the result from our previous weather modification research and also a uh, result from this uh, uh, rain enhancement uh, project. Okay, yeah, thank you. Yeah, this field of weather modification, especially the, the field experiment uh, phase of it, is a very exciting place for young early career scientists to be involved in because this is really hands-on. Uh, you can imagine flying an aircraft through a cloud to do measurements of cloud droplets, flying at three, four hundred kilometers an hour and being able to measure particles down to micron size uh, in real time. This is really exciting stuff, real hands-on. So there's many opportunities uh, in this field to get scientists uh, excited of the field of atmospheric science. You have a career in weather or maybe climate science, which is becoming more and more important. So the next one deals, uh, next question deals with uh, sustainable water security. And sustainable water security is actually quite an important thing as we move into the century, where we see the demand for water and the pressure on water resources growing. And any disruption, uh, as we see also yeah, during this El Nino year, yeah. in many places in the world being exceptionally dry, really disrupts the, the lives of people and the livelihoods of people and can lead to consequences of uh, forced immigration and refugees. Uh, and uh, so this is really serious stuff. So this question is about this issue. How do you see rainfall enhancement methodology and its role in the provision of sustainable water security options for especially arid and semi-arid regions of the world. Yeah, same order. Okay, uh, yeah, there are several uh, technology uh, to uh, secure uh, water uh, resources, including desalination of seawater, or recycling of uh, industrial water, or reuse of wastewater. But the rain enhancement is the only way to where uh, we can produce a large amount of water for industry, industrial use, you know. For example, uh, water for irrigation, uh, provided uh, we find the clouds suitable for cloud seeding and applied efficient, uh, uh, appropriate and efficient uh, technique to increase uh, uh, rainfall. You know. That's why the uh, rain enhancement is uh, 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 critical uh, in uh, uh, such a uh, water security issue. I think so, yeah. Linda? Yeah. Uh, for particularly the arid and semi-arid region like UAE and the, the Gulf region. So I think the lack of uh, fresh water resources is such a big, pro a big issue. Um, and lack of natural rainfall is also a, a big factor affecting this water security. So rain enhancement definitely is a very important issue to overcome this water security. And also uh, rain enhancement is cross boundaries of countries and even continents. So it is very sensible to have a joint force and uh, using complementary and synergistic uh, capacity to tackle this uh, common problem, water security, and uh, also enhance the uh, rain precipitation in the needed areas. Thank you, Volker. 
Yeah, please, on this point, please allow me to make a bit uh, general statement and broaden a bit the picture. Um, my perspective on this is the following. If we now look what's going on, going on in the Earth system, we are doing currently many experiments which are unintentional, which are influencing the environment in a negative way. Now, for instance, uh, let me give you three examples. One is, of course, climate change, you know, where we uh, change the greenhouse earth in expected negative manner. But this is uh, human-made. And the other one is um, deforestation. We know now that if we change a tropical rainforest into a desert region, that this can have severe negative consequences on the rainfall in this region and on the water cycle. The third example may be um, air pollution. We understand these processes and these can be simulated by models, so we can reproduce what's currently going on with the models. So why we don't bring together our human intellect to influence the system also in a positive manner? And this is what I think is very exciting about the RAIN Enhancement Program. There's a potential you know, to bring our knowledge together to do something good for the environment. And I'm fully convinced that we bring our um, projects together, that we will find a way um, of uh, hygroscopic seeding or so, where we really know when we do this kind of process that there will be RAIN Enhancement. And if this is possible and we are successful with that, then of course, we're producing more water in this region, and this can be managed. And um, so I think we, we should really exploit our human potential here uh, for something good and not only for the negative um, impacts. Thank you. Yeah, that's quite an inspiring answer. I like that. Uh, the last question, and then I would also ask Uma and Sofian if you have any questions that uh, you are welcome to also <clears> add. But let's get into this last one. Uh, what are your views on the importance of such global research programs in enhancing scientific collaboration in critical areas like water security? In other words, this uh, very nice initiative in the UAE, how important is that uh, for enhancing scientific collaboration? And why is it important to collaborate scientifically? Yeah, you know, uh, everybody knows that uh, we are suffering from the uh, shortage of natural water resources. And uh, we need this uh, uh, through the commitment of uh, the cloud seeding uh, to enhance the amount of rainfall to recharge the water, uh, the un uh, underground water and the aquifers. Uh, so it is very important for, for us here uh, specifically that the annual rainfall do not exceed 100 millimeters here. Uh, and you know, the uh, infrastructure of the, uh, the canopies, that extreme uh, suction of uh, aquifers and underground water can cause uh, some canopies in, uh, underneath. And for future, it will not be good for the uh, inf infrastructure, the ground infrastructure. And uh, uh, we did uh, some uh, experiments, uh, statistical experiments, mostly the randomized uh, experiment, and we found out the about 30% uh, increase of rainfall was uh, obvious for us. And, uh, you know, 30%, uh, it was in uh, uh, non-turbid atmosphere, clean atmosphere. But in some cases where the uh, turbidity is available, more pollutants, and because, you know, pollutants working as uh, aerosols and uh, nuclei of condensation, the increase was between 10 to 15 uh, percent. So together we will work together also with all uh, the awardees, and we will provide them uh, all the information and all data, whether data and available here. And we'll, uh, together also, for example, uh, uh, the confluence area uh, uh, at some places, uh, which is the initiation of the cloud development, will be studied by uh, Dr. Volker. Also, we have some hidden clues concerning the uh, uh, canopies and the seeks between the mountains that uh, some, sometimes we have same weather situation but no clouds been developed, but the next day it has been developed, and we have hidden clues need to be revealed. Mm. Okay, I would like to ask Omar also to add to this uh, importance of global 
cooperation and scientific cooperation? How you see it? Uh, well, uh, let me start with uh, uh, the uh, United Arab Emirates experiment in the cloud seeding and you know weather modification science. Uh, we've been working on this field, you know, for since 2000, and we've been continuously working on operating cloud seeding. And uh, uh, during this period of time, uh, all the experiments that has been done and all the observed, you know, and cooperations with all the uh, organi international organizations and institutes around the world, uh, we saw uh, the gaps. We saw the missing points in the knowledge, in the scientific understanding. And also, uh, we noticed that there are a lot of areas where nobody enhanced or nobody touched since, for example, if you take the seeding materials or the uh, formula for the seeding materials, this uh, formula did not, you know, it's not enhanced, it's not been changed. There is also no standard, uh, standard for uh, the manufacturers, for example, for the seeding materials. Uh, and this is more than, uh, more than 50 years. So definitely there is a room for enhancements in the, on, on this particular, you know, uh, subject on the, uh, uh, the uh, flares or the uh, seeding materials. Also, we believe that, uh, you know, uh, this field is very expensive. Uh, your laboratory basically is the atmosphere. You have to have access to radars, you know, state-of-the-art radars that can see water droplets and reflectivity and all that. You have also to have access to aircraft uh, measurements, you know, and instrumentations and all that stuff. And we think it's very difficult uh, for one organization or for just, you know, scientists in a working in a university to have access to all these facilities. So this program is really, is really important to encourage and stimulate all the scientists on all fields to come up with their bravest, you know, and uh, new ideas. We think there is a lot of room to uh, enhance these operations. Uh, basically, the cloud seeding operation is a chain of steps. And uh, because of that, uh, we, if we enhance every step, you know, from the methodologies, from the fundamental understanding, from also the uh, operational and the observation, uh, we think this program could really add to the science and benefit the United Arab Emirates and also uh, other uh, uh, semi-arid or arid regions. Thank you. Oh, this is very true. I've been in this field myself for quite a number of decades. and. Uh, I can assure you that this is one of the highlights that I've seen in my career, uh, a completely new and exciting direction that's been given to the research by the UAE leadership by bringing international scientists from Europe, from Japan, uh, from locally together with other experts in the world. And it's very interesting, there's more than 50 countries globally that have got weather modification and rainfall enhancement projects going at the moment. And there's a critical need that all this effort and all this resources that's spent on this is done in the most scientific way possible. And what's been done here in the UAE will definitely show the way for that to happen. So I would like to ask the panelists uh, also their views of uh, this uh, global cooperation. Uh, uh, what is the value of that in terms of critical issues like water security. If you could just shortly say a few words each on how's, what's your views on scientific cooperation globally and how, why is it so important? Okay. So, uh, as you said, uh, uh, there are many countries uh, where uh, they are doing a, a rain enhancement uh, project, but uh, there are very few active uh, rain enhancement uh, projects. Uh, research project uh, in the world now. And uh, most of them are uh, very much sporadic. So it is very difficult to pile, uh, stock uh, pile the outcome and uh, get to the next uh, rain enhancement project, you know. In this regard, the UAE uh, research program is very important uh, because uh, this program uh, continued for a while and the, encouraged the, also the international uh, uh, collaboration uh, and also uh, the uh, consistent uh, uh, research uh, activity, you know. 
I think the, uh, this UAE research program is very, very important uh, in this field. Thank you. Linda, your views? Yeah. Uh, I think there are many global challenges, such as the global warming, climate change, poverty, etc. And uh, water security and lack of fresh water is one of them. And uh, if other global challenges can be tackled by joint force, and why not uh, fresh water resources, which uh, green enhancement is one of the potential solutions, uh, can be tackled by joint force. I think it's very sensible. Okay. As we already discussed uh, here on, on our panel, I mean the um, science of rain enhancement is very complex. It covers many different aspects of earth system research, like land atmosphere exchange, flow structures in complex terrain, cloud microphysics, precipitation microphysics, and they are all over the planet. They are experts on this. So I think to be, uh, in, it increases the visibility and the success of a program like this if it's also exchanged on the international level and um, bring in knowledge from all different sides you know, on the aspects of rain enhancement. So I think it's important that the, these kind of projects are discussed at WMO panels you know, to um, yeah, see what, what can be improved and what can be uh, done uh, to improve further the success. So I think the, this kind of international embedment is very important and, and training as best as possible different science from different aspects in meteorology and earth system science. So thank you. Uh, we, I just want to extend an invitation again. If you have any questions to address to the panelists, you can uh, send them to me and then I will ask them. But before we get there, I just want to share with you how this field is very related also to the field of medical science and pharmaceutical science. Because uh, when you deal with patients and you develop a new vaccine or a new treatment, it's very similar to when you apply a seeding technique to clouds. You have patients in the atmosphere and you need to treat them and you need to do physical studies to understand how the treatment works. But then you also need to do a statistical experiment, mostly, so that you can uh, have statistical result between placebo treatment and real treatment to see how the patients reacted to that. And exactly the same sort of approach is also often be followed in the field of weather modification uh, as in medical science. And the statistical methods are also very similar. But of course the uh, patients in the atmosphere are even more difficult than the ones <laughs> that we have uh, in the practice of a, of a medical doctor. Uh, natural variability is extremely big and no one cloud is exactly the same as the next cloud. So it's inside this big natural variability that you need to pick <coughs> up a signal of what you were possible, what you were trying to do. And this is really the challenge. But it comes down to a forecasting challenge because if we could exactly forecast what a cloud would do naturally, we would be able to also forecast how it will change if we treat it in a certain way because we would understand all the processes inside the cloud. So the research being done here will also benefit the daily forecast that all of you will get in future and also the climate projections because clouds also drive the climate system to a big extent. So, so this is really the fundamental work that we are discussing here. So uh, I don't see any questions. Maybe they completely flawed all of you. It's uh, almost uh, lunchtime. And I just want to check with Umar and Sofian if they have any questions for the panelists, maybe at this stage, that you would um, like to ask. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm Are you okay? Yes, I'm okay. Yeah, Sofian? Yeah, I'm, I'm okay. You're okay. Uh, maybe you'll... So you're going to work with them for the next three years. You can ask uh, them many sure, questions. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and so, we'll be their uh, right hand, for example. So I just want to thank the panelists uh, very much for their openness and sharing with us their knowledge. And please join me uh, in, in thanking them.